What was the most disturbing thing you saw in person? You slash the taller tailor responded. ER nurse, trauma code on a middle-aged gentleman who wrecked his car, basically dead on arrival and didn't make it. The ambulance that dropped him off had to do a speed clean of the bloody gurney to rush out to another call immediately. 30 minutes later it brings in an old lady who had fallen at home. She kept saying she can't get a hold of her son and he was supposed to take her to the hospital. Turns out her son was the one who wrecked his car on his way to take his mom to the hospital and she was brought in on the same gurney that her dead son was just laying on moments earlier. That was a gut punch having to tell her the bad news. This was in a rural community with limited ambulance service. You slash upshot responded. When I was about nine years old our family was staying at a campground on a river in northern Michigan. A two-year-old boy had wandered off and was missing. The entire park was looking for him. After about two hours with no luck some of us began looking in the water at the ends of the docks nearby. When I dove down in about four foot of water I found him floating just off the bottom of the river. I pulled him to the surface and shouted for help. The EMTs made an effort to resuscitate him. To no avail. As horrible as that was, the thing that I will never forget was the sound his mother made when I carried him ashore. I still enjoy boating and swimming, but I have a very healthy respect for the water. You slash rebel wanker 69 responded. Around the age of five I was living with my family on my grandfather's farm. One day while my father was working I was home alone with my mother, she went to take a bath while I was watching TV. After my show ended I realized she wasn't anywhere in the living room, kitchen, or master bedroom, it was a trailer home so not big. I went to check the only bathroom, and she was completely submerged underneath the bath water from having a seizure I ran to go get my grandfather, and called 911 like I was taught as he tried to revive her via CPR. The paramedics eventually arrive and are able to revive her, but only for a brief period before her heart gives out again, and they pronounce her dead. TIDR, I found my mother's corpse when I was five. Edit, didn't exactly think this would blow up this much thank you for all the kind words. I'm 30 now so LVE had more than enough time to cope. You slash filth the habits responded. I've seen a lot of fucked up shit, but there's one incident that stands out to me be what it involved a kid. I saw a lady have a grand mal seizure while holding her baby. She was shopping and having a normal day, then suddenly her arms just unfolded and her infant smashed into the floor face first. The sound was unlike anything LD ever heard, kind of a cross between an egg breaking and a melon cracking open. Immediately afterwards, the mother hit the floor on top of the baby and was violently seizing. I didn't know if the baby was already dead from the fall or if it was going to be crushed by her body. What I do know is that the baby never made a sound. We called an ambulance and the mother lived, but I don't think the baby did. You slash wrestling woman responded. Domestic abuse in the middle of a street. I thought they were strangers and that she was trying to get away from him and he wouldn't accept it. He kept holding onto her and trying to drag her with him while she kept begging him to let her go. We stopped and she looked at us and asked for help. He took off when he saw us walk towards them. She then let us know that they were married, but at least she wouldn't get beaten up that night since we interfered. She would go spend the night at her sister's place, and she wouldn't divorce him because there were kids involved. I hope she did end up divorcing him, and I those kids weren't too scarred of having to survive growing up with their father beating their mother. You slash deleted responded. Probably not that disturbing in comparison to others, but when you work as a vet tech you see a lot of horrific things that stick with you. Two instances that stick out the most to me was a Labrador that had been degloved from the waist down after being hit by a car, open fractures on both her hind legs. We tried to save her, but she was already gone by the time she arrived. Then it was witnessing the owner's grief at such a traumatic event and losing his beloved pooch. Second was a kitten that had been smacked against a wall by its hind leg and then thrown over a balcony. He survived the fall, but the hind leg had essentially disintegrated it was broken so severely and had to be amputated. What was more fucked up was the owner tried to claim the kitten back so he could put it out of its misery. Humanity at its finest. You slash Uncle Grease responded. Motorcycle T-boned a vehicle immediately after a hurricane in Florida. Blew through a four-way stop going way too fast flew over the car and went face first into the asphalt. Headless body continued about another 40 or 50 feet. In Dayton, Ohio around 2015 went to an air show where the big attraction was a wing walker, you stand on top of a plane as it does tricks. The announcer was really hyping up the woman, as she performed talked about how she was a wing walker, as a hobby and her children were here in the stands watching etc etc. Plane went down for its final trick. A corkscrew that leaves the plane upside down a few hundred feet above the ground. Corkscrew was successful and the plane was upside down, pilot lost control and immediately nosed dove into the dirt, 
was close enough to the plane to watch her get torn to pieces seconds before the plane exploded. There's actual photos online of the incident and of her getting torn apart. Absolutely terrible. I think about her children from time to time. Hope they are okay. You slash MXG XVXNS responded. Around two months ago my older neighbors came back from holiday, long story short the older gentleman came back with multiple infections including COVID. They both asked me to help and support them with a few manually demanding jobs, which of course is totally fine. A few days after they arrived home, I got a phone call from his wife, as she was concerned about her husband's condition, I went upstairs, and he was blue and shaking. The shaking stopped and his chest dropped and didn't raise again. Straight onto CPR and an ambulance, took them less than 10 minutes to get to us. I'm happy as fuck to be able to say he came home just a few days ago, but watching someone go is definitely my scariest experience. You slash Tunk 13 responded. Six years ago, my family traveled to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania to visit family for Easter, and we drove back home on Easter Sunday afternoon. We were driving on I-81 South in Virginia, and noticed traffic was slowing down, and a lot of smoke coming from the side of the road. An SUV had crossed over the median and hit another car head-on. Both vehicles were completely totaled and were engulfed in flames, quite a few cars had already pulled over to try and help. I remember looking over at one of the cars and seeing a person in the passenger seat, who had been decapitated, the driver appeared to be dead too. The heat coming from both cars was really intense, as we went past it. I looked it up on the news the next day, and four of the five people involved in that wreck were killed, one person barely survived. It was a really ugly and sad scene to witness, especially on Easter Sunday. You slash cons era responded. My own mother being attacked by a dog while holding the cat I had grown up with. Our neighbors raced greyhounds and our cat was sunbaking outside on the veranda, one of their greyhounds had escaped the pen they were housed in and wasn't wearing a muzzle. Unfortunately our cat was the first live thing the dog spotted at the same time my mother walked out the front door. She tried quickly grabbing the cat, but by the time she had gotten to him the dog had reached our veranda, knocking my mother off onto the ground a few feet down and began to fight for both of their lives. Luckily I was home at the time, as well as my father who was asleep after a long night at work, I heard her screams for help ran outside to the scene, and was stunned for a few moments before screaming for my father who raced outside to try separating the dog from them both, who had by this time ripped shreds into my mother's arms and dislocated our cat's hip, but luckily both were alive. A ranger and ambulance was called and then a few days later police attended although, when they approached our neighbors to locate the dog they had hidden it away on another property, which was eventually located. To this day, years on they have never approached any of us to apologize. You slash buck underscore thorn responded. When I was in Navy boot camp years ago, while I was on watch one night, some guy from the third floor decided to swallow a double-edged razor blade, then do a swan dive from the third floor balcony onto the pavement. The pavement smashed his skull and left bits of him all over the pavement. Then, about 20 years later, I was working as an off-road truck driver in the oil fields when last one night, I came across some tail lights in the road ahead of me when I noticed that the two red tail lights were both on the same side of the road, and the two amber running lights were both on the other side of the road, then I saw the shadow of the truck lying on its side. I got out, and saw somebody sitting on the ground in the middle of the road, highlighted by his truck's headlights. I walked up and asked, are you alright, buddy? There was no answer. Then I looked at his face and saw one eyeball hanging down on his cheek. Then I noticed the smashed in hole in the side of his scalp. This was out in the New Mexican desert on a 4WD road, so it took over an hour to get help out there. He survived long enough for them to get there, but he died in the hospital a few hours later. That was tough. You slash Franz Tur responded. When I was around eight to nine I saw a woman jump to her death from a bridge. We stayed and waited for the rescue team to come and pull her out of the water. They managed to find her despite the strong currents. I remember seeing her being carried by one of the emergency crew. He was yelling stuff about how her lungs had been punctured. People rarely survive that jump, it happens a lot in my hometown, sadly. At the time I wasn't really super horrified. I knew what happened and to this day I remember every second of the whole ordeal. I remember her clothes, I remember seeing her on a bench under the bridge, as we walked to the park where we'd later see her jump. I remember thinking that she looked sad and that maybe it would be nice if someone talked to her. I feel guilty for not having done anything to help her. You slashed a doctor responded. Having a great night at a pub, met up with two girls I knew and we decided to all go to pub down the road. Step outside and discover the aftermath of two guys who'd been arguing on the street. One guy pushed the other onto the road, and he had been run over by a semi-trailer. Apparently the truck driver didn't even know he'd hit anything, and just thought it was a bumpy road. There's a very dead guy on the road, his friends are inconsolable, 
the idiot that pushed him is still pumped up and doesn't seem to comprehend what's actually happened. There's a brain lying on the road in front of me. The guy that caused it still seemed to think we could do something about the situation, he said. Don't worry about me, worry about him. We told him it was too late for the other guy. He screamed at us it's never too late. The girls I was with suddenly didn't feel like partying anymore, and I made sure they got into a taxi. The police showed up and I warned them of the gruesome scene ahead to prepare them. I wandered off down the road. On the way I saw a couple waking down the street towards the incident. I advised them to take a detour down the side street to not see it. They thanked me and took the detour. That was about the best thing I achieved that night, not letting just one couple see what took me weeks to get out of my head. I can still see that brain on the road. You slash Chungo Pulikes responded. Honestly, LV seen a lot of bad injuries and fights, but the worst thing was probably when I was a kid, went to a friend's, parents, friend's house out in the country, gun shooting, cooking and hanging out, good times. Anyways, one time they were having a small get together, and one of the people that came brought six live rabbits. I watched guy kill them about four of them by breaking their necks, and skin them. Even taught me how to skin one, which was neat, but, then another guy said, hey let me try, proceeded to smack a rabbit full force against the wall. Which only knocked it out. And proceeded to just drive a knife under its skin, and the shrieking sound that it made will forever be a noise that I can't forget, and honestly it makes me so fucking sad. Edit. Did not think so many people would have had similar experiences with this. Also did not think this comment would like my most upvoted comment lol. You slash stuck on Pandora responded. My dad had a cerebral ornism while washing the car and effectively died in my arms. I watched our family dog get hit by a car and the person just drive off, thankfully she went on to live many years. Just with a lame back leg from that point on. I'm the lone caretaker for my 89-year-old disabled grandma. I love her to death but understand a partially paralyzed person comes with needing a lot of assistance, and so we have our share of disturbing moments. But, the most disturbing is how most everyone abandons you once the caretaking begins. We just don't see most of our family now, and quit getting help about the moment we got her home. And here in the States we get the luxury lower middle class living, medical expenses, inflation causing high grocery bills, all without assistance. That being said, we really are blessed and do have a lot to be grateful for. You slash printed black responded. When I was 16 to 17, was driving down the road and looked out the passenger window and seen in between two house, which allowed me to see one of the backyards for a solid second and a half. In that time, there was a man sitting in a chair in the backyard with a pistol pressed against the bottom of his jaw, and he pulled the trigger right when I looked. 1.5 second view and I saw a man's whole head explode. I thought for sure I was tripping so L circled the block and by the time I got back there was a woman throwing up in the front yard and I drove past and looked back again, going slower this time and my god what a sight. I'm 20 now and I'll never be the same. I've seen three people die in front of me now, but that was easily the most gruesome. You slash Jameson's wife responded. My first day as a travel nurse, I was placed in COVID ICU, June 2020, so OG pandemic days. I had a 42F patient, who was 27-ish weeks pregnant and on a ventilator and paralyzed. She was dying. This was her fourth child, she had three at home. They did a C-section iron MY room at 9 in the morning because her husband begged them to try and save the baby since mom wasn't going to make it. I am not an L and D nurse. The OB resident gave me a crash course for afterwards, but COVID patients were not allowed on the L and D floor at that time. I was given the L and D extension if I had extra questions or needed someone to come check my patient. She died after my shift. She wasn't there the next day when I came back. Last I saw, baby was being intubated and taken to the NICU. I hope it did okay. I'm not sure I'll ever forget that one. There were a few, but that was rough. You slash Sarpanitu responded. Witnesses a rollover during a blizzard. I called for emergency services as I approached and assessed the situation. One of the occupants was partially ejected through the sunroof and had his head pinned beneath the vehicle. He was alive and conscious, but in dire need of extrication. He was screaming about the pressure. Myself and others arriving collected vehicle jacks and began trying to lift the vehicle off of him. We were making good progress, we had managed to make some space for him, but he was still stuck when the firemen arrived and took over. They replaced our jacks with dunnage, think wooden railway ties, in a stack and then used airbags to lift the vehicle. Unfortunately, as the weight of the vehicle was taken by the airbags, everything slid and the dunnage collapsed. The vehicle landed full force on his head again, with a sickening crunch, and that was it. I had almost gotten this man out, but the professionals took over and killed him in front of me. 
You slash Oraro 777 responded. 1. Living in Joburg, South Africa, my sister went out to the car in our housing complex to get her cigarettes and asked me to stand at the door to make sure she was okay. I stood there watching and out of nowhere, two guys jumped her with a gun to her head and she fought back until our dogs bolted past and attacked the guys who sprinted away. We had Daxons. 2. Work in learning disability care, and on my first day on a new placement, one guy I was told to care for ran past me up the stairs, where he isn't allowed to go, he had an tonic-clonic epileptic seizure, at the top of the stairs and fell down the stairs with multiple crunches. I tried to catch him, but he slipped out of my grip. He miraculously survived with no lasting damage. I cried for like five minutes and then decided I would never let that ever happen again. 3. Wasn't in person, but there was a video here on Reddit of a car accident where a woman had her face ripped off and she was tragically disfigured, because her eyes, jaw and nose was gone, like there was just this hole where her face was. All you could hear was this gurgling sound with screams of agony. Something you wouldn't forget in a hurry even if you wanted to and trust me, you're lucky to not have seen it. You slash digital DH responded. Train stopped suddenly. Massive slamming the braking stop that took some 200 yards to stop. We look outside. Me and a friend, six foot tall friend, come down the track following people from the train that went to check on something. My friend gets closer and he becomes pale and his knee just gave way. We were 14. I pushed through the crowd to see. I should not have. There was a kid, no older than four as if asleep four to five yards from the track. I wondered why he looked to peaceful sleeping. Went around and I understood. His lost part of his cranium, brain matter, was sipping out and there was bone fragments around and brain matter. 30 years later. I still remember. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this one.